Today's video is going to be a summary of the key points for the photoelectric effect. And I'm gonna go over three separate points that you should be aware of so that you have a good conceptual understanding of what's going on with the photoelectric effect. But before we do that, please don't forget, subscribe to my channel, get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. Give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment, share this video. And also I've already made some videos for an explanation and example problems for the photoelectric effect, you can link to those videos in the upper right hand corner of this video. But let's get started. As I said, we're going to go over three different points. Point number one has to do with the difference between the frequency and the intensity or the brightness of the incoming light that we're going to be shining on that plate to hopefully produce some photoelectrons. And it says if the frequency of the incoming light is less than the cutoff frequency, which we give the symbol F0, then no photoelectrons will be emitted even if we increase or even if the intensity of the light is increased. And that is because the energy of the incoming light is not related to the intensity. Okay, The energy of the incoming light is directly related to the frequency. So if we increase the frequency, we increase the energy. If we increase the intensity, the brightness, then we're just getting more photons but we're not getting photons with more energy. So please remember, the energy of the light is not dependent on its intensity, but the energy of the incoming light that we shine on the metal plate is dependent upon the frequency. And those, the energy and the frequency are directly related to each other. If we increase the frequency, then we increase the energy. And please remember that photoelectrons will be emitted if the energy of the incoming light is greater than the work function. And in the video that I made, which you can link to in the upper right hand corner, this video that goes over the cutoff frequency, this is the graph that we had that we talked about. And you can see that we have here a lower frequency. And as we increase the frequency, we're going to be increasing the energy. And here we're below the cutoff frequency, which we're below the energy that is the work function. The light that we're shining on the plate does not have enough energy to release any photoelectrons. But at some point, which we call the cutoff frequency, then the energy of the incoming light will have enough energy to release some photoelectrons. And that extra energy that's left over after overcoming the work function will be given to those electrons as kinetic energy as velocity. Okay, so you can see here we're below the energy, below the cutoff frequency, the cutoff frequency, and then we have given to those uh, electrons, our photoelectrons, the energy that's left over after we overcome the cutoff frequency, okay? So after we overcome the work function, excuse me. So that is point number one. That is to help you understand the difference between the frequency and the intensity. If we increase the frequency, then we increase the energy. Those two points are directly related to each other. Now, the next one is similar, but it has to do now with the kinetic energy. What happens to the extra energy? The extra energy is given to those photoelectrons as kinetic energy, as motion, velocity. So, if the intensity of the incoming light remains the same, but the frequency of the light is increased, then the maximum kinetic energy of the photoelectrons will also increase. Okay, and this is the idea that if we shine the light on the plate, and we increase its frequency, then we're increasing the energy, and then after we subtract out, or we overcome the work function, then that increasing energy will be given to our uh, photoelectrons as kinetic energy. So please remember once again that the energy of the light is dependent upon its frequency. Those are directly related to each other. And increasing the energy will result in increasing the kinetic energy of the photoelectrons. And we'll see that when I show you the PHET simulation. Okay, and here is the diagram that we had for our photoelectric effect. Remember that we had light that we were shining on the plate. The light has energy. The energy is calculated as H times F, which is Planck's constant times its frequency. And if the energy of that light is greater than the work function, then the leftover energy will be given to our photoelectrons as kinetic energy, as motion, as velocity. And as we increase the energy of this light, and we overcome the work function, then whatever is left over, the energy that's left over after overcoming the work function, will give those kinetic, uh, those photoelectrons more and more energy, because we'll have more and more energy left over 
after overcoming the work function. So please remember once again that the frequency and the energy are directly related to each other and this is the equation we use when we do our problems for the photoelectric effect and you can see here, here's the energy of the incoming light we subtract out, so to speak, the work function and whatever is left over, okay, is the energy that's given to our photoelectrons as kinetic energy. And this is kind of a constant for each metal. So if we increase this, we're subtracting out the work function, there'll be more and more energy left over as kinetic energy for our photoelectrons. Okay, that's point number one and point number two. Now point number three talks about if we increase the intensity, then we get more photons of light striking the metal plate, and then we'll get more photoelectrons. So if the frequency of the incoming light remains the same, but its intensity or its brightness is increased, then more photons of light will strike the metal plate, and more photoelectrons will be emitted. But because it's the same frequency, and those photons of light will therefore have the same amount of energy, the maximum kinetic energy of the photoelectrons will not increase. So you can think of as you increase the intensity, as you make the light brighter that's striking the plate, you have more photo photons, okay? And those photons, you can think of it as like each photon can emit one photoelectron, one electron from the metal plate if it has enough energy. So if we increase the brightness, we increase the intensity, we have more photons of light striking the plate, and then we'll have more photoelectrons coming off of that plate and have a higher photo current, okay? But their energy will not increase, their kinetic energy will not increase because we haven't increased the intensity. We haven't increased the frequency. So if we have a constant frequency, then we have constant energy. Okay, those two things are directly related. Increase the frequency, increase the energy. But here we're keeping the frequency the same. So there we have constant energy. But we increase the intensity, and increasing the intensity gives us more photons of light that are striking that metal plate. And if we have more photons of light that are striking that metal plate, then those photons of light can emit more photoelectrons, but those photoelectrons will all have the same kinetic energy. There'll just be more of them, okay? So there you go. That is the three principles that we're gonna, that you should be aware of for a good conceptual understanding of the photoelectric effect. And now we will go to our simulation and show you each of those with the PHET simulation. So here we have our PHET simulation. Remember PHET, they have excellent simulations for math and sciences. Check out their website. There's a link below. Whether you're teaching or learning, you'll find it very interesting. Now this is for the photoelectric effect. We're gonna go through each of the three points that we made in the presentation. The first one was if the frequency of the incoming light is less than the cutoff frequency, then no photoelectrons will be emitted even if we increase the brightness or the intensity. Remember, the point was that the energy in the incoming light, this is the incoming light, the energy in the incoming light that strikes this metal plate that's hopefully gonna release our photoelectrons is dependent upon the frequency of the light, but is not dependent upon the intensity or the brightness. So you can see here we have 830 nanometers. We can slide this over. When we slide this over, we're going to be lowering the wavelength. As we lower the wavelength, then we're going to be increasing the frequency and increasing the energy. And at some point, we will be at the cutoff frequency and we'll have enough energy in that light to overcome the work function. And any energy that's left over after overcoming the work function will be given to our photoelectrons as kinetic energy. Okay, and you can see that on the graph right here, here where the frequency was below the cutoff frequency, the cutoff frequency is right around here. That energy, that extra energy is given to our electrons, our photoelectrons as kinetic energy. All right, now the point was that if we lower the frequency, we increase the wavelength and lower the frequency, then that light doesn't have enough energy to produce photoelectrons even if we increase the intensity. So the intensity here is at 50%. And now we are going to increase the intensity all the way to 100%. You can see that that light is still not producing photoelectrons because it's not the intensity that's important. It's the wavelength and the frequency and the energy. And there we have enough energy to overcome the work function. And we're below, excuse me, we're above the cutoff frequency. Okay, so that is the first point. So here for point number two. 
remember that point number two was if the intensity of the incoming light remains the same, so we're going to keep the intensity the same, we're going to have the same number of photons striking this plate, but if we increase the frequency, then the maximum kinetic energy of the photons will increase, which means they'll be going faster, they'll be having more energy, because if we increase the frequency, then we increase the energy here, and after coming, overcoming the work function, those electrons will have more energy, and they'll be moving faster. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to bring this down to some point where we'll be producing photoelectrons, and you can see those are photoelectrons, and you know they're not really moving that fast, because this light has enough energy to overcome the work function, but there's not a lot of energy left over, so the electrons are not moving that fast. But if I shorten the wavelength, decrease the wavelength, and then I increase the frequency, increase the energy, then as I do that, I move across here to ultraviolet, this light has more energy, and now there's more energy left over after overcoming the work function, and those electrons, those photoelectrons, you can see them moving quite quickly, okay? And that means that increasing the frequency will increase the maximum kinetic energy of those photoelectrons. Okay, once again, the intensity does not affect, okay? We might get more electrons, okay? But that doesn't affect the maximum kinetic energy. Okay, so that was point number two. So here we go with our simulation of PHET and the photoelectric effect and demonstrating point number three. And point number three was that if the frequency of the incoming light remains the same. So we're going to lower the frequency to a point where we're going to get photoelectrons and we're going to leave it the same, but we're going to increase the intensity this time. And if we increase the intensity, we're going to get more photons of light from our source striking this plate. And that means we're going to get more photoelectrons, but their maximum kinetic energy will not increase as we increase the intensity. Intensity is more photons of light. More photons of light is going to be more photoelectrons, but the intensity does not affect the energy, so therefore the kinetic energy of the photoelectrons will remain the same. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to lower this, and I think we get right around here, we get some photoelectrons, okay? And there you see we're getting that number of photoelectrons. And you can see if I decrease the intensity, now I could turn the light off all the way, but let's say I decrease the intensity to like 10%, you see I'm getting fewer photoelectrons. If I increase the intensity, then I get more photoelectrons, but they're not going any quicker. Okay, the ones that are moving the fastest are not moving any faster, and the average speed of all those kinetic energies for all those, excuse me, the average velocities for those photoelectrons remains the same. Okay, so lower intensity, no photoelectrons, less photoelectrons, and as we increase the intensity, we get more and more, and as I think I said before, you can think of this intensity is increasing, that means there's more photons, more photons, that means you can think of each photon is knocking off one electron, one of our photoelectrons. All right, so there you go. That is my summary for the photoelectric effect. I hope you found that video helpful. If you did, please do all of the following four things. Okay, subscribe to my channel. Get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. Give me a thumbs up for this video. Please, a nice positive comment in the comment section below. Don't forget, sharing is caring. Share this video with all of your friends. Show them just how much you care. Thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next video.